feel um, incredibly calm. You enter a kind of almost meditative trance because you're so focused on your breathing when you're first diving. But once you get past that, you begin to hear how noisy the entire reef is. What you'll see is an entire ecosystem and city created, uh, not only by coral reefs, but everything else that inhabits it. Um, it's incredible to think that you could go snorkeling and see some corals that are thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. I don't think there are any other animals on this planet that live as long as corals do. And it's incredible to think that some of these huge coral reef structures have been here far longer than any of us could ever imagine. I believe they're the only thing in the world that, are, that is a plant, a rock and an animal all at once, which I think is incredibly special. They make up the foundations and framework for an entire ecosystem. And it's, yeah, it's heartbreaking to know that this entire ecosystem that's literally on the brink of collapse is all down to us. It was winter in London, it was really cold and dark. Um, I remember feeling pretty um, disengaged with my job at the time. And I remember thinking, you know, this can't be all there is to life. Like I really felt like I was in this cycle of being in an office job and earning money to buy things that I didn't need to make me happier. I was just like in that classic cycle. I think it was like a New Year's Eve we had and um, we were talking about our New Year's resolutions. And I said, oh, my resolution is like, next New Year, I won't be here. And I remember people being like, oh my God, that's outrageous, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, yeah, and then um, that April I had um, left the country. Today I am going to do a snorkel tour and then afterwards uh, I have a lot of emails to get done, um, so a lot of computer time. Um, I'm maybe going to the study fair but I'm not feeling amazing this morning so we will see how I feel. Maybe I need the water to, you know, awake me. Yeah. I didn't have any formal education in marine biology and a lot of them require that and I was like well if I can't do a job in marine conservation I at least still want to do a job where I'm diving and this job opportunity arose uh, and I jumped at the chance I had never heard of Curacao before in fact I called it Curacao I was like I'm going to Curacao uh, <laughs> Everyone was like, what, where? So yeah, um, so I came here and uh, that's how I then found out about the island.
Curacao in particular, the coral reefs do two things here. They offer coastal protection and they are also a huge, huge, huge source of tourism here. Okay, welcome everybody. We're all here for the snorkel talk. Yes, yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so uh, just to introduce myself, my name's Katie. Um, I work at the Coral Restoration Foundation Curacao, and Hannah also works there as well. Okay, I'm gonna pass a few of these. If you could pass a few of these down, so that everybody can have a look at what we have here. My first question to you guys is: Have you seen coral before? Do you know what it is? Is it just a rock? Is it slimy? Any other ideas? No. Okay. In front of you is some dead coral, unfortunately, that we've painted to make it look alive. Now, if you have a look, you can see all these, you can feel it as well. You can see all these divots, all these little protrusions, okay? Yep. Now, each of these protrusions is an animal, okay? And this animal is called a polyp. And it's essentially a mouth with tentacles around it. Um, it's related in the similar family to jellyfish or sea anemones. So you can see it looks very similar. It's got these tentacles that can move and put food in its mouth here. A lot of people think that coral is just a rock. It isn't. It's actually a living animal. And you can see on a piece like this big, you can have thousands of these animals all over it. And they coexist and work as one animal. These little polyps all live together and this is what makes up something called a coral colony. A coral colony can be seen as a neighborhood um, or, or a family and lots of families all live together in a neighborhood and this neighborhood is what we call a coral reef. You can do two dives on the island and see completely different things. You can see some of the most beautiful dive sites in the Caribbean. And then you can see um, some incredibly degraded dive sites as well. The only thing that's killing the um, corals is us because they have no other reason uh, to die. There's a number of factors for why reefs degrade generally. Some of these are global issues and some of these are local issues. Global issues for reefs is firstly rising sea temperatures. Although my watch still says it's only 29 degrees in the water, it's the duration at which it's 29 degrees. Back, back in the day, it could have only been 29 degrees for one month, and now it's for a lot longer. And that's the problem. On top of that, um, there's been a lot of pollution and coastal development. This is also going to put a lot of chemicals in the water. It's going to stress the corals. All of the beaches that you can now walk into, oh, it's very nice to walk on, you know, very soft, but it's all dead coral. There's 
hypotheses that if this was all happening a lot slower, then perhaps the corals could slowly adapt, but it's mm. the speed at which this change is happening that the corals can't adapt quick enough. Um, and there are thoughts that, you know, the, um, the Earth has gone through temperature cycles for, you know, mil like millions of years, but it's the speed at which this change is happening that's the problem. Um, and that the corals can't adapt quick enough to their surroundings. But don't worry. Okay, <laughs> Coral Restoration Foundation, Curacao, along with hundreds of organizations, we are not the only one okay. globally that do this, are trying to restore these reefs, okay? So, what do we do? We have, and we're very lucky in Curacao, we still have um, some pristine reefs, some really, really, really good quality, high coral coverage reefs, okay? Um, and we have colonies of these corals, staghorn and elkhorn, still around us. So what we have done is um, we applied for permits and we got permits to collect 200 fragments of these corals and hang them onto trees. These corals um, sit on these trees for between six to nine months. They start off small and they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when they're big enough, we then uh, do something called outplanting. This entire process from a small fragment to creating a home for a fish is about 18 months. So it's a very, very, very fast process that we're working with. The problem we have at the moment is that these populations, there's 3% that we have globally left. And the way that corals grow and reproduce is once a year, they will release eggs and sperm into the water, and we call it coral spawning, okay? It happens, all the coral species around, in one area will do it at exactly the same time, and it's linked by the temperature of the water, the lunar cycle, and the sunset time. And you can time this down to two minutes. You can be like, okay, they're ready, and then pff, And all of these corals release these eggs and sperm into the water. When they're in the water, they can then mix, fertilize and then they come down and settle onto the reef. The problem is, is that at the moment, these populations are so low that this coral colony is here, a kilometer away, this coral colony is here. When they spawn once a year and they release these eggs and sperm into the water, they're too far away. So what we are doing here is we are taking little bits of coral from here, little bits from coral from here, and we're putting them next to each other. So we're essentially um, 
uh, my boss calls it, we're like the tinder for coral, okay? <laughs> we're just bringing all the coral together um, so that when they do spawn once a year, it's much, much, much more likely. Um, it's still not 100% possible because it's in, it's in the ocean, in mm -hmm. a wild environment, that when they spawn, the eggs and the sperm can meet and they can fertilize. The main problem with um, coral restoration and any sort of marine conservation, you can do as much as you can, but without backing from the government and policy change, you need everything to work together. But I think um, those kind of things, policy change only comes about when there's the awareness is high enough. Um, and the, you, the only way you get to that point is by lots of people talking about it and knowing about it. And our main problem is everything we do is underwater. So yeah. if you're having, you know, a glass of wine or a beer and you're looking out at the sunset, you don't know that underneath there's so much work happening, um, which is why we run these tours and things like that to try and get people talking about it. So when you go home, you won't believe what I saw underwater, <laughs> you know. We don't have the manpower to um, market it and spread the word as much as we would like. Uh, because it's a bit of a chicken and an egg situation. Um, we want to grow as a foundation, but in growing we require money. Um, and um, we can't get money until we grow. So the two are inextricably linked. Um, because um, a lot of the work then falls onto my shoulders and Ray and Hannah's shoulders um, and we are incredibly stretched um, with what we can do uh, with there's only 24 hours in a day um, and the workload that we are doing is you, you could easily spread that amongst I don't know five six people I think I um, naturally enjoy um, being very busy and I um, relish in um, having a lot of work to do. I'm kind of like treading this fine line between feeling really, really, really fulfilled in my job and doing tons of things and having tons of like balls in the air, um, which means then that I'm con not constantly, but a lot of the time I sometimes feel like I'm on teetering on the edge of a burnout kind of thing. But yeah, sometimes it's really, really, really hard to um, listen to your body. Especially because when your mind is telling you one thing and um, your mind is like, just go! Mm -hmm. You've just got so much to do, just keep doing it! You're doing mm -hmm. great! <laughs> And then your like body begins, you're like, why am I waking up in the middle of the night feeling really dizzy and shit, you know? Um, or why do I feel really like lethargic or crying, you know? Um, but I also think um, that I, I don't know, I'm like getting, I'm getting stuff done. to educate the younger generation, so to speak, because they are the ones that are going to be dealing with this ecosystem when it begins to disintegrate a little bit further. It's important to engage people, to educate them about the importance of corals and also the work that CRF is doing that really is important to help corals. And here it's a, a way to see it without getting wet so people don't have to be able to dive to actually understand and see firsthand what the work of CRF looks like. 
we're now in the ocean lands. We're five meters below the surface. And we're looking into the open sea. Mm. Wow, I love it. The fishes are beautiful, the corals are beautiful, and I really like swimming. And what happened if, we, if the ocean is inhabitable? If you were in a, if you were a coral, think how you would feel being killed by a higher species just so they can have their have their fun. If the ocean dies and we only know 5%, that will leave a lot of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Because actually, if we don't have a healthy coral reef, more fish will die. If we don't have fish in the ocean, we don't have fish to eat. And also tourism will be affected because a lot of people come to Curacao because they love what they can see here. All these beautiful fishes, they snorkel, they dive. And if all of that is gone, the people maybe won't come anymore to Curacao. And then we'll just get bankrupt. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would not be nice. You say it not be nice. It's it's not gonna be not nice. It's gonna be terrible. Yes. We are involving all these groups because we can't spread the message by ourselves. This is a global issue and we need as many people involved in not only spreading awareness about this problem, but also involved in trying to help come up with a solution for it as well. An entire ecosystem is on the brink of a collapse and that is also a huge driving motivation for me to try to do what I can um, in my capacity to try and prevent that from happening. This is a Curacao story, it's not an ocean encounter story. And we wanted to, you know, we always imagined that, hey, if, if everybody was taking care of their, their backyard, so to speak, and we were able to set up these nurseries all along the southern coast, then we'd really have a big impact. We beheren onze eigen nursery, die we van CRF hebben gekregen. Ik denk dat het ultieme goal is om zoveel mogelijk koraal op dat rift te krijgen. We like to work with Coral Restoration Foundation um, and with Katie together. And we are actually very proud that we can be part of it sometimes. The corals are basically essential. As a diver, um, the ability to be able to do something other than just recreational diving and to be able to assist in something and perpetuate something I see every day and love is fantastic. Uh, I would urge all divers, if they can, to get involved in local projects. I think it's important that they are spreading this information. Hopefully the people taking this class in turn will also take this information home with them. I'm really interested in coral, so I wanted to do my part and help out. A lot of people have seen a huge difference in the amount of coral and the amount of fish on the reefs. Um, so I think that difference we're making is pretty cool and pretty clear. Um, but I think even more important is the educational difference that we're making. I have an after-school program for children between four and 12. I've had, had workshops with uh, CFR to just um, yeah, get them inspired and get an idea of yeah, their own nature. For me, that's very important. They are the future. There are a lot of milieu problems gekomen and bijna all the problems zijn door the mens afgekomen. Dus So it is also our task, I think, that we het Weet je, dat we de mensen ons best doen om het beter te maken. Because I have decided to make my living working with and showing people the beauty of, in the nature of the sea is absolutely the, the least I can do is to support something like this and to give back. <laughs>